Welcome back. Well, Brian Bledsoe of Brian Bledsoe Weather joining us this weekend to talk about the forecast. Brian, California is drought free. That is impressive. But Alaska is getting so much snow that boats are actually sinking in the harbor. I mean, the amount of moisture that some of these areas are seeing, Brian, are absolutely, it's, it's unreal. What is driving that? It is. They've had a couple of different atmospheric river events impact areas along the West Coast, which, you know, this is the wet season in California. So they are prone to seeing some of those uh, this time of year. And the recent ones have been, as you mentioned, pretty crazy. And the same thing could be said for big storm systems that's been going on up in, the, uh, up in Alaska. But the pattern that is coming up is actually going to be about the exact opposite of what we've been dealing with lately. Let's look at that animation and show you what the upper levels are going to be doing over the next 10 days or so. And where you're seeing the reds and the yellows out west, that's a large ridge of high pressure that's developing. And that's pretty much going to shut the precipitation off out there across the west. Farther east, you see all that blue showing up across the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes and the Northeast. And that's a trough of low pressure that's eventually going to bring a pretty sizable cool down to the east and the northeast portion of the country as we get deeper into this forecast. With that in mind, let's see how that temperature trend is going to behave as we see this unfold. And this is kind of a five-day running mean of what temperatures are going to look like. And all you really need to see here is all that orange and red pretty much go away across the Great Lakes and on up into the Northeast, the Corn Belt, and it's replaced by the blue signifying colder than average temperatures as we get into the middle and latter portion of this upcoming month. We've or this month, and we even have, you know, a little bit of cooler than average temperature trying to show up down there across, uh, you know, the front range of the Rockies from Colorado all the way down into New Mexico and Texas. So again, kind of a pattern evolution, if you will, that's going to unfold over the next uh, couple of weeks or so. And from a precipitation standpoint, well, it's not going to be great, even in those areas that we've seen some of that, uh, you know, more active weather across the Great Lakes in the Northeast. In fact, all that brown across the Mississippi Valley, the Mid-South, down along the Gulf Coast is going to end up being drier than average conditions. And you look out there in the West, Oregon, California, Washington, a lot of those Western areas which have been so wet, as I said, are going to have that door shut on them for a while with this pattern change uh, that's taking place. So that's kind of what we're expecting over the next, you know, 10 days or so, an evolution of sorts time. Yeah, well, that's definitely not what farmers in the Mid-South, I think, wanted to hear. I mean, they are dry heading into this spring. And so this week, we did see the Climate Prediction Center. They said that La Nina is likely to persist for now, but that's mm -hmm. followed by a 75% chance of a transition to Enzo neutral during January to March. Enzo neutral, they say, is likely through at least the Northern Hemisphere through late spring 2026. Brian, what does all of that mean? I, I Here's what I take away from this. And I've been chatting about this and other meteorologists have been chatting about this for a while. I have great respect for NOAA and the National Weather Service. But to be honest with you, I think they're a little late to the party with how this transition is going to unfold. Because what's going on in the Pacific Ocean right now is a pretty significant transition away from the La Nina. So I think we have seen this event peak. I think it is going to exit more quickly than maybe what NOAA's forecast is suggesting. And I think we will probably end up going into El Nino conditions faster than what NOAA's prediction is actually saying. And initially, what that can do, that transition period, it can still have some dryness produce uh, across the plains and across the Corn Belt, at least early on in that transition. And history suggests that after that early transition is gone, that a lot of us will have wetter than average conditions try to show up during that uh, during the heart of the growing season. So, you know, this is a long ways out there. I know there are different models that show this, th this, that, and the other thing going forward. It's certainly something we're going to have to watch closely because when we see this type of transition take place during the spring, a lot of times the weather can be fairly wild time. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. And you can actually sign up for customized weather forecast from Brian at brianbletso.com. All right, well, the grain market's seen some life to start the year. What is fueling that change? And with big USDA reports on the way, how should you prepare? We talk markets with Dan Bossie and Mike North. That happens next. You're watching U.S. Farm Report. Trusted, timely, tradition.